Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Midnight Chill. First off, I just want to apologize for my absence. January and February were pretty hectic months and it took a lot out of me. March hasn't really gone as well so far, but hopefully now we get things back on track and we're back to the weekly podcast. I just want to start off by letting you know I have set up a Patreon account. Sometimes as a writer, we need a little extra help. Patreon seems to be the place where I can get a little help by giving a lot back. Currently, the writing business is, if you're a really successful writer, then things work out. But if you're a beginner and are just starting off, then it's not so easy. So I just think Patreon might might help me and encourage me why with all the extra content that I'm going to be putting up and sharing with you guys. So if anyone wants to support me, my Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Darren Gallagher. And yeah, there'll be more extra exciting content over there if you want to come and have a look. This week's story is just something short and sweet once again, just to get back in it. And hopefully we have a longer story next week. So for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the midnight chill. What would you do? What would you do if I suddenly jumped off this cliff? She asked him, standing no more than four feet away from the edge. The drop to the sea below was at least 90 feet and he didn't feel at all comfortable with her playing like this. You know I don't like it when you do things like this, he said and turned his head away from her as he lay propped on one elbow on the safety of the picnic blanket. But what would you do? She smiled, waving her arms and balancing on one leg so it would look like she was in trouble. Stop it and come away from that edge. Ah, come on, where's your dare inside? She teased, taking another step toward the edge. Obviously the same place as your common sense. Please come away from there. She began to pretend she was falling again, but he knew exactly what she was doing and didn't look at her. Something he'd learned to do the hard way. When she didn't receive the attention, she stopped, slapped her hands on her hips, sighed, and then pouted. He put a grip onto his mouth and smiled. She wasn't impressed and stomped on the ground like a child. You know, she moved so suddenly that the dry earth her foot landed on suddenly tumbled over the edge of the cliff, pulling her with it. He jumped to his feet as she disappeared over the edge, screaming. His heart was in his mouth. He couldn't believe what had happened. Help me, she screamed, just as he appeared over the edge. Vertigo hit him instantly and he wobbled, almost falling over himself. He knelt down and looked over the edge. She was hanging there a few feet below, holding on to the roots with one hand and a protruding rock with the other. Help me, she pleaded. He could see the fear of imminent death in her eyes and for a brief second he enjoyed it. He always knew this day would come when she pushed it too far. Please don't let me die. The hand that was holding the roots slipped about a centimetre and he could see the strain on her fingers against the rock. How many times have I told you not to be playing around like that? It's dangerous, he said, looking at her disapprovingly. Shock of his words washed over her face. I'm going to fall. Help me. It was only a matter of time before something like this happened, you know. And you can't say I didn't warn you. Help me. Pull me up, damn it, she screamed. As her hand slid further down the roots, there was almost nothing left to hold on to. He shook his head and lay down on the ground, placing the top of his chest at the edge, and reached his arm down toward her. Further, I can't reach you, she said, struggling to hold on. Her knuckles were pure white, the blood unable to flow with the ferocity of her grip. Just reach up, will you? You got yourself in this position, and you can get out of it. Anger swept across her face this time. She knew he could reach further, but he was choosing not to. She gritted her teeth and mustered every bit of strength she had into her arms and pulled up as hard as she could. She managed to jump about five or six inches, which was enough to reach his hand. She noticed though that he attempted to pull away as she reached for him. She was too fast however and grabbed hold of his hand before he could. He had no choice but to pull her up. What the hell were you playing at? She roared at him as she stepped quickly away from the edge and turned to face him. What? You need to learn a lesson. Do you not think the falling over a cliff and almost dying is a lesson? 
The last thing I needed was you lecturing me as I hung on for my life. Well, drastic actions calls for drastic measures. He shrugged his shoulders as if what had just happened was a minor thing, which infuriated her. She narrowed her eyes. Would you have let me fall? No. Well, what then, if I had slipped while you ran your mouth? Or couldn't hold on any longer, what then? Then I guess you would have brought it on yourself. Her mouth dropped. I don't even know why I'm with you if you're going to go on like that. Well, don't be so reckless. If something happens to you, then you've brought it on yourself. You know what? Her eyes narrowed again and fury burned inside them. I don't want to be with you anymore. Goodbye. She pushed him as hard as she could. Both hands slammed into his chest and the force took him over the cliff. She heard his screams fading as she went back to the blanket, refilled the picnic basket and walked away. She had no space in her life for someone who's going to treat her like that. That's it guys, thanks for listening. Don't forget to head over and have a look at my Patreon account. You never know, you might find something there you like. Also, if you like what you heard today, then my books Love's Curse and Strings are available to buy on Amazon. Also, all my social media links will be in the description box below. I'll be back next Tuesday. Until then, AOI.